Hi guys, it's Hags from Perth. I just wanted to show you where we're at with converting the CZ Shadow 2 into a single action standard minor gun or something for steel challenge. What we've done is we've added a Emantec brass magwell, which is a simple item to install. It just slides on and it's locked in place with a grab screw. These are the short Emantec brass grips which are slightly shorter than the originals so that they can accommodate the space taken up by the magazine well. Um, we've changed out the original hammer and we've taken out the disconnector. So all we've taken off the, the hammer that was in the firearm to keep it production legal is the strut. And we've attached the strut to the hammer from Emantec, which is a single and double action hammer, but this is not legal in production. Um, this is a really nice hammer for single action and it goes very, very well with the single action flat trigger. So we've also removed our trigger and we've removed our safeties and installed these ones from Emantec. Now, the left hand safety has got a nice angle to it for your thumb to rest on. And the one on the right has got a little ridge to also rest your thumb on when you're shooting weekend. Now, what I really wanted to discuss was what happens when you fit a safety. So, in the position that this hammer is in, the gun is cocked. We try and install our safety and it doesn't go. So we do a bit of work on it and it goes a little bit of a way and we think that's fine. But look what happens if I try and take the safety off. The hammer follows. Now it's caught on the second hammer hooks or the half cock to prevent it firing. Sometimes that doesn't happen. It's always good to have a hammer with, with half cock function on it. But the point I'm making here is, and it's happened to me in a competition in South Africa at the Nationals where I didn't touch the trigger on the draw, turned off the safety, hammer followed, and it's called bumping the sear. So just to explain what goes on in here, this is your sear. This is the part of the sear that holds onto the hammer hooks right there. This leg of the sear is what is prevented going down, allowing the sear to disengage from the hammer to allow the firearm to fire by this bearing surface on the safety. Now that surface there is oversized when you buy the safety catches because the tolerances in the trigger group are all different in every gun. So some people will undercut this leg some people will work on the bearing surface on the safety. I'm working on the bearing surface on the safety because I still need this sear to work with my normal safety when I convert the gun back to production. Now generally we say always work on the cheapest part and the sear would be cheaper than the safeties, but this sear is working very, very well in my gun. It's a nice trigger and I don't want to change the geometry of it. So what needs to happen is we need to take down this larger bearing surface on the safety. So I'm gonna take that out. Let's drop the hammer. Lift that leg of the sear spring. And that should free the safety. There we go, and it's come out. Put that down for now. You need a very, very good diamond file or jeweler's file and I just want to point out that bearing surface again so this is how the safety was sitting in the firearm this part here is extra large and it's oversized and it needs to be fitted or custom fitted to your firearm and to your sear so it functions the edge that wasn't going under the leg of the sear which is this leg as you can see, it moves. That is to fire the firearm. When you pull the trigger, that goes down and allows the hammer to, to fall. Now with that bearing surface under there, it prevents it going down to allow the gun to fire. And that bearing surface is not getting under there because it's too big. So that's what we need to remove some material off. Right there. So we'll give it a couple of strokes with the file. And a little 
can sometimes be too much. So be very, very gentle with how much material you remove. I want to get it square so it's all equal along the length of that edge. And that's all I'm doing. There's about seven to 10 strokes there, if that, not even full strokes. Just to see where we stand with it going under that claw of the sear. Now, it's a bit of work. You're installing, you're uninstalling, you're installing, you're uninstalling, but it is the only way to do it properly. And it needs to be fitted properly so that it works. These are new safeties and they are tight. So bear with me. There we go. So now, let's take the hammer back and try and engage the safety. It's still bumping and it's still not going under. There's quite a bit of material there that still needs to be taken down. So I've got a better idea now of where we stand and I'm gonna take a bit more off. So we need to get that leg out the way again. And that's the sear spring leg. Safety out. And let's work on it. Little bit at a time. If you take too much material off, you've gone too far and you cannot put that material back on. You will need a new safety. So, a little bit at a time. Still a long way to go there, but I'm still gonna go slowly. I've seen people put a Dremel to it and I think that's just asking for trouble. So, leg up again. Safety out. That's why I suggest really good files. They're worth the money because when you need to remove material, they need to work. Jewelers have the best files. They can't afford to play games with the gold and the platinum they file. It needs to work every stroke. And that's what these are. Where you get a lot of practice as well in installing and uninstalling your safety catch. Oh, almost there. And notice we've eliminated one problem. When we turn it off now, we're not getting the bump. So it's not bumping and dropping the hammer, which would have caused an AD and a possible disqualification if it hadn't been tested or if it was borderline and it just started to go wrong on the line. So we are at a place now where it's pretty much working and there's no play in the hammer and there's no bump in the hammer when I disengage the safety. So I'm pretty happy with that. That's a very positive lock and it's been fitted correctly. It's preventing that leg of the sear from dropping down when we press the trigger and blocking it from falling. And when we disengage, the hammer's not falling. Brilliant. Thanks for watching. That's how you install a safety catch. See you later.